Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. One of the things that excites people the most is when there is a dichotomy, when two seemingly opposite things combine successfully. Just look on the internet and you'll see tons of videos about cats getting along with dogs, cuddling with dogs, sleeping with dogs, playing ball and catch with dogs. Like what? Dichotomy, people love it. Black Sabbath and Puddle's Pity Party, the melancholy clown that has operatic undertones, these two seem like they come from totally opposite worlds. Yet, Puddles covered war pigs. And I think that he's going to completely turn the song around in some way that is very surprising. And in my opinion, it's probably going to be inspiring. This is what I've come to expect of Puddles. I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's get to it. Witches at black masses Evil minds that plot destruction Sorcerer of death's construction In the fields of bodies burning As the war machine keeps turning to mankind poisoning their brainwashed minds <laughs> sorry to cut you off on that awesome high note dude uh immediately i think that the tone quality is gonna be providing us such a huge hugely different experience of the song right ozzy is so direct, so nasal, it's pointed. Uh, it, it almost like plows through you with the sound. And that is very good for certain types of instruments. There's so much cut in there, right? It has an aggression to it as well. This kind of tone quality just is not Puddle's kind of tone quality. I feel that they are very much opposite. Puddles is still making great use of twang, like really incredible use of keeping the sound very focused in this area. But his sound has so much more loft in it. I'll talk about what that means. There's a lot more any like inner, uh, just a marination of the sound inside. Uh, also, it just sounds like a much deeper resonant cavity. There's a lot of ways that they are total opposites in their sounds. And the overall experience to me immediately is that this seems more reflective than just in your face. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I like the immediate softer approach, especially for Puddle's voice. Generals gathered in their masses, huh. just like witches at black masses. So that line, as he's going down, it just sounds like it's full of regret. And it's, it's really the way that I feel the sound is being channeled, right? Sound can exit and also ping, ping, ping around our, <laughs> around our mouths, around our cavities in our heads. There's so many directions you can essentially channel your sound to achieve a different output. Um, I, I almost think about it like in music production where you could possibly just have the sound go completely raw through to a speaker, or you can channel it through all kinds of different things that will compress the sound, that will give it extra drive. There, there are lots of different ways you can produce a sound, essentially. 
And we have the same ability to do that within our bodies before it even hits the microphone. In this case, puddles to me sounds like the sound goes forward and then it goes back. Uh, I like to think about this as like a pinball machine sometimes. We can light up different areas, different kinds of resonances. And when you have loft in the sound, there's that word again, loft, it's often when you have a little more soft palate lift and they're just kind of, oh, oh. you know, if you hear that kind of sound, you're like, oh, that sounds like an opera singer talking, right? <laughs> That's because opera singers have a lot of loft in their sound. And one of the opposites would really be Ozzy. <laughs> So much twang, so much uh, country singers tend to have a lot of twang as well. That's, you know, it, it kind of goes with the word. So when Puddles goes down this line, instead of just having the super direct explosion of the sound outwards, it sounds like it like sort of just marinates that it, it spins around here. It becomes thoughtful in the processing before it comes out. That makes us feel that kind of experience with him and have regret, I think. Generals gathered in their masses just like witches at black masses. Right? There's a softness in the release of that, especially. Minds that plot destruction. Sorcerer of death's construction. And one of the things that I find fascinating is the, it feels like the production of this has given a little bit more directness to, uh, to Puddle's voice. So there's a meeting of how this song was originally created, but it meets it and then it pulls it back and it feels introspective right after that. Uh, it, it is very heartfelt to me. In the fields of bodies burning. I love that end. <laughs> As the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind Poisoning their brainwashed minds Okay, again, I'm gonna stop him right before that big yell, but I just have to point out the instrumentation so far. It's all been in this sort of very narrow band of the sound that we're hearing. It's very middle, there's nothing strongly bassy, there's nothing that's been super strongly in the treble really high yet either. Um, it's allowing for a ton of expansion in the song. I don't know how big we're gonna get since we're having a, a very stripped down approach. I think it makes a lot of sense to start very, very narrow because that allows for a lot more growth. I don't know if we're gonna get extra instruments. We might get super huge at some point, but I have a feeling we're gonna actually stay a little stripped down. I might be wrong. Let's keep going. Well, oh, yeah. ah, that was good, don't worry. Yeah. I love the percussion here. It's very soft. I just have to say the instrumental choices in here are amazing. It has that dread, a, a little drive towards the dread as well. And I think that's a lot of it in the composition. But there's a pattering that's happening with various percussive types. And it's not just in the percussion. There's also percussive ways that some of the instruments are being used. And uh, that creates a sort of pattering of the heart. And then you have this low bass that'll come in um, and the piano. And the piano actually gets a little treble moment as well. And then with strings too, that creates that dread, sort of a drop in the stomach. Beautiful instrumentation. And really well mixed. I love how uh, 
I can all, I feel like I can almost touch the instrument. hide themselves away. They only started the war. Why shouldn't they go out to fight? They leave that role to the poor. You know, I just realized I'm gonna pop over to my lyrics here. Why should they go out to the fight? You know what? I never realized in the original how many questions were really being asked. Yes, it is one big question, but it sounds like rather than a question that's looking or seeking an answer, it seems like a question that's being asked to express frustration in the original. And this one is expressing more sadness and a pleading for us to get an explanation why, and if that explanation then can't be given, to say, okay, fix it. That's uh, I like this questioning style more. They only started the war. Why shouldn't they go out to fight? They leave that role to the poor. Time will tell. I can, I can feel how he's essentially set different scenes with the different instrumentation. I like that a lot. I want to talk a little bit about anatomy now and how that might affect different sound types. Uh, it's fascinating to me that there are some general trends in uh, how voices can be produced that are more according to body size. It really has to do with vocal fold size. Uh, if you have a smaller set of vocal folds, you're probably going to sing higher, larger is more likely to sing bigger. Um, and uh, there's also this idea of space, how much space is available for the sound to marinate in or just come straight out. Uh, if you think about a massive resonance chamber, even to the point of maybe extending the lips to create this entire chamber that's longer, that's more likely to highlight deeper undertones and a, a more narrow space is more likely to highlight some brighter undertones or overtones. And when you put all of these things together, you take a, a look at Puddles, right? This is like this towering clown. And he has a lot of space, it looks like in this area. So even though we don't know how long his vocal folds are, we would guess um, that he probably is gonna have a deeper sound than Ozzy. And I can really tell in the way he's producing, he really, he thinks about that inner chamber a lot. Uh, and that chamber, the pharyngeal wall back there, that can really change the chamber. There's so many things back there that can change. This is one of the things that's so exciting about voice. It feels like there are infinite ways to create expression in sound. And Ozzy sounds just like, you again, <laughs> straight out there. Uh, very, so much drive in it. So it, it's fascinating to me then. I think that these two different performances are very much going towards the strength of each artist, right? With this kind of thing, it's gonna be deeper. It's gonna feel like, uh, I think it's just gonna hit us in a much more rooted kind of way than the aggression of Ozzy's voice. And I think that they've played to his natural genetics in this case very well. This is all, I'm saying this is some general things. There are plenty of people that break the rules, by the way. There are ways you can change and shift your genetics, sort of mold your voice in different ways. So uh, just general trends here. Making war just for fun. Oh, and I just have to say, thinking about like how deep that sound is and, and right that space when he goes up he really is able to thin the sound that's a great example of how you can shift things 
to make your sound into something that might feel not as naturally accessible, you can truly do it. And he does that very well in his high notes here. Lines. Emotion in Wait sound. till the judgment day comes. Yeah. Oh. It feels very primal in the instrument choice. Like a little bit of war drums happening. And one of the things that really came to mind there is it feels like there's some sort of what I associate as maybe Native American or sort of indigenous culture uh, music stylization brought into that, especially in the drums. And I think that there's a lot of things we could politically say about taking over those cultures and a lot of the regret and questioning that has surfaced years later. And I wonder if this came to his mind at all when he was choosing these instrument types. I don't know. And I, we can have conversations for days about this. Um, but if that was in the planning, I just have to say, wow, what a beautiful point of thought to bring us all to. appreciate that in both versions we have incredibly clear lyrics this is actually a strength that i think of both singers um the way that puddles and by the way i keep calling him puddles it, it's mike geyer but for me when he becomes puddles the way that he embodies the entire character is it's so uh above and beyond it's just such a true complete transformation that I don't think of him as this other person. I think of him just as puddles. Uh, so congrats, congrats, dude. That's amazing. Uh, but both of them do this incredible job with the enunciation. And if you hear me going, oh, that's amazing, ooh, 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 making all kinds of appreciative sounds, hopefully they sound very appreciative because I love the final consonants. Let's go back and talk about how gorgeous they are. Now in darkness, world stops turning. The ning, that ng ending, the way he's singing through it and enunciating even a g at the end makes that word so much easier to understand. And it actually takes extra energy to continue the sound propagation through that consonant. We'll go back and I'll keep talking about the last ones as we're going then. Now when darkness world stops turning. Right? <laughs> so good. Ashes where the body's burning. That one, same thing, but because you've already heard it once, he actually goes a little bit softer and he's pulling back softer on the dynamics. So instead of this g going outwards, it feels like it goes ng inside. There's a difference between sort of imploding a consonant and exploding it, and that was the perfect example of the difference. Is where the body's burning. <laughs> no more war pigs have the power. And I love that R colored consonant or vowel. Hand of God has struck the hour. 
same thing. Beautiful coloration of Damn, that, just the right amount. God is calling. Look at that, like, again. On the knees, <sighs> the wall pigs crawling. And I understand every single word. Everyone. Begging mercy for their sins. <laughs> Satan laughing spreads his wings. I love the way that Puddles looks into the camera and there's so much sadness that's expressed with it. You just feel this incredible depth of emotion from a clown. I mean, a lot of clowns like get this scary, creepy breath, right? Puddles to me is like begging for someone to understand him. At, or someone to tell him why the world is such a sad place. <laughs> like this, who knew that we needed a clown to give us this message, but we did. <laughs> On the knees, the wall pigs crawling, begging mercy for their sins. Mm. Satan laughing spreads his wings. Attention to the posture and what it expresses there. Oh. <laughs> wow. That look at the camera and the way that it zooms in, it's once again highlighting so many of Puddle's strengths. The way he's able to express so much through facial emotion, through vocal expression. Wow, I think that he has made this song surprising and inspiring in an unexpected way. It, it's like he's daring us to truly question the original meaning of the song. If you wanna see some more analysis of these two artists, we'll try and do like an alternation of them back to back in this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day. Mm -hmm.